video game challenge videos have been taking off on YouTube, and I can see why. I love watching people squeeze more and more hours out of games that are years old. My favorite by far are Pokemon challenges, and I figured it was my time to hop on that bandwagon and try it out myself. I will say right off the bat, my favorite is by far Madry Bread. If you haven't seen his videos, I highly recommend them. But he's really the only Pokemon challenge YouTuber that I've watched, so the pacing in this video is probably going to mimic his to a T. And I don't see too much of a problem in that. You could say I'm a little unoriginal, but what are you going to do? So here's where I ask the question, can I beat Pokemon with random Pokemon? And this isn't just a straight up randomizer. I used a random number generator to decide my starter. I rolled a D6 to see how many Pokemon I could have and a D8 to see when I was allowed to get those Pokemon. So let's go over the rules. All of my Pokemon will be completely random. I won't allow legendaries or pseudo legendaries so I don't make it too easy on myself. And so it's truly random. I can't evolve what I get so I get what I get. I'm allowed my second Pokemon after the third gym. I will have some other Pokemon but they will purely be for HMs and I will not use them in battle. Held items are allowed, so I can't use restoratives in battle. And just like Madry Bread, I am writing the script as I go, so I'm not sure how this is going to go either. Like I said, I used a random number generator to pick my starter and got Sea King. He's not the best stat-wise, but he has good attack and a decent move pool with physical moves like Waterfall and Megahorn. I named Pokemon completely random names that have no meaning, so this one is named Lokeli. But, for some reason my computer kept auto-correcting that to Loki, so that's probably what I'm going to call her. She has a jolly nature, so more speed and less special attack, which is perfect for this Pokemon. Her ability prevents her from getting burned, which isn't super useful, but I won't have to worry about getting my attack cut at least. I think this will be a good start, honestly. Bugsy will be a breeze with Peck, but we will have to see against later gym battles. The first rival battle had me a little worried since I replaced Totodile and my rival has Chikorita, but Sea King already knew Peck so it was a cinch. However, Peck is the only attacking move that Loki will learn until level 11, but Bellsprout Tower will be a great place to get some levels. And as predicted, Bellsprout Tower was easy, but my puppy decided to jump on me while I was choosing what to replace uh, with Horn Attack and made me misclick and chose to replace Peck. So. Thanks, Deethra. The move reminder isn't until Blackthorn, so that just made Bugsy a lot harder. Now it's time for the first gym leader. Faulkner's Pidgey went down in one hit, and his Pidgeotto went down to two horn attacks after a tail whip. He was pretty easy. I figured with Sea King being a fully evolved Pokemon that the early game would be pretty easy. Bugsy was very hard, though. My first attempt was ended by the much faster Scyther. My second attempt was pretty bad, too. I started with a Supersonic, which missed the Scyther, he used Focus Energy and Leer while I had to try Supersonic again. I got a little lucky with Scyther hurting itself, but Scyther is a lot stronger and faster. I decided to try the Rival instead. Horn Drill won't affect Ghastly, so I had to try Supersonic and Water Pulse, which one-shot it. Next was Bayleaf, which is a lot scarier. My Supersonic missed, and I got poisoned, and then Bayleaf got me with a Razor Leaf. I guess I need to level grind a little during which I learned Flail and replaced Tail Whip. After the grind session, Bugsy wasn't too bad since Sea King outsped Scyther at level 25. My rival started the same way as before, Ghastly went down to just one Water Pulse. Bayleaf was a pain, but I got lucky with a one-hit KO critical horn attack. I didn't think there was any way that that would have happened until I was at least level 30. Zubat went down on two Flails. That was a pretty difficult early game block, but it's time to keep moving. We are only one badge away from getting a new Pokemon. Whitney started strong. After setting up a new Aqua Ring, I took Clefairy out in one lucky critical horn attack. Whitney's infamous Miltank was an annoying wall of course, but I got past after getting lucky with a Supersonic and outspeeding it with Water Pulse. After that, I got my second Pokemon, which the universe decided was a Torchic. I named it Puquo. He's a hasty nature, so more speed and less defense. He has Blaze as an ability that can be a little useful. He doesn't learn any fighting moves by level up, but he does learn Flamethrower later down the line, so that should be a little helpful. But there's my full team. Now it's time for the rival battle in the Burn Tower. Ghastly got a Supersonic off and decimated Puquo, and Loki couldn't get past Bayleaf's defenses even with an 8 level lead. So it's time to level up Puquo. 
At level 20, I tried again. I sent out Loki first to deal with Ghastly and save Puko on Bayleaf. Puko still couldn't finish Bayleaf, but Loki was able to finish it off. And his next two Pokemon went down to an insanely overleveled Loki. Next up is Morty, and I have no idea how this is going to go. I started with Puquo with a Focus Energy and Ember, which took out the first Ghastly, who kept using Spite, but only was able to get one hit on Gengar before he Shadow Balled me to death. Gengar slept Loki and got a lot of damage off, but she woke up in time to finish Gengar, but then went down to getting cursed. I think I can do it if I get Water Veil off right away, so I tried again. This time, the Gengar slept me right away. I was able to take it out still, but it took me down to 1 HP. Haunter gave me a huge problem, and I survived thanks to Aqua Veil. I thought I was going to go down to the last Haunter, but I won because it wasted a turn using Mean Look. The Lighthouse was easy, and Puquo did learn Fire Spin, which may be useful. Now the water area between me and the next gym was going to be difficult, but I taught Loki Surf in place of Water Pulse, and made my way trying to avoid as many trainers as I could because they would destroy Puquo. But we made it in one piece and challenged Chuck. Puquo went down in one focus punch, his defenses are really rough, but Loki got a crit surf and took it down in one hit. Polyrath was hardly taking any damage from Loki, and after I finally got it to low health, Chuck used the Hyper Potion, and then another when I got it down to low health again. The battle was tedious, but I finally won after I got no after it used nothing but Focus Punch. After that, we brought Amphi her medicine and challenged Jasmine, who I thought would be a pushover, but Magnemite one-shot Puquo. Thankfully, Lokeli pulled through just to go down to another Magnemite. I grinded a little with Puquo learning Quick Attack. It does the same amount of damage as Scratch, but having a priority move will help with his awful speed. My second attempt on Jasmine started the same way as before, but I won this time with one lucky crit on Steelix. Puquo decimated everything in the Team Rocket hideout. The battle with Lance was simply because Loki just surfed for the win, and right before I fought the Ice Gym leader, Loki learned Waterfall, probably the best water move I'm going to learn with a physical water attacker like Sea King. Puquo couldn't beat Seal, but Loki once again swooped in to save the day. She destroyed Seal and Pile of Swine. Dugong was a bit of a slog, but I eventually won. I actively resisted every move it used, so the only annoying thing was its constant resting. Everything in this run was going good, until another visit from our rival, with a new, fully evolved Meganium. And man, this thing is just a freaking wall. I started this time with Loki in the front to deal with Golbat. Puqua whittled down Meganium, but I died to a critical petal dance. Time to grind, I guess. This try went much better with Puquo beating Meganium, but with 5 HP. But he still had enough to one-shot Magnemite, and Loki got a one-hit KO on Haunter and Sneasel. That was rough. I am not looking forward to the Elite Four. The Goldenrod Tower takeover was just time-consuming as I destroyed the leader with Loki. The last gym leader is what scares me, honestly. Claire is a Dragon-type user, and her ace Pokemon is Kingdra. And in this gen, Kingdra is only weak to Dragon something I don't have access to. It resists fire, and quad resists water. The only moves I can use against this that are neutral is horn drill and quick attack. Kingdra's a beast. I even use this on my rank team in Sword and Shield. If she uses Dragon Pulse, I might be able to use Mirror Move with Puquo. Maybe I'd have a chance, but since he's a fire type, I'm assuming I'll just get Hydro Pump to death. Let's give it a shot and see how it goes. And Gyarados just destroyed me. I'm going to need to either grind or find some better moves to use. Seeking can learn Blizzard, which can help with Claire's two Dragonairs, but neither Pokemon can learn Electric to deal with Gyarados. Puquo can learn Rock Tomb, so I can try that. I had the move deleter remove Surf from Loki and replace it with Blizzard, and went back to Union Cave and grabbed the TM for Rock Tomb. I did some slight level grinding and gave both Pokemon an Orenberry. It's not much, but it'll help. Puquo flinched on his first turn, but... Thanks to an Orenberry, managed to get two Rock Tombs off. I sent out Loki to set up Aqua Ring right away. I got Gyarados down to red, but Claire healed him, and I went down to just not being able to deal enough damage. On another attempt, I got Gyarados down, but couldn't finish the Dragonairs. I think if I just got three or four levels on Loki, I could one-shot them with a Blizzard. But I came back at level 52. I can get Gyarados down pretty easy by sacrificing Puquo, and then it's on to the real test. I'm finally able to one-shot Dragonair, Kingdra comes out, and I'm not in a good spot. Paralyzed and half health. But at least my horn attack does a decent amount of damage. I go down again, 
but I think I can do this as long as I can hit both Dragonairs with a Blizzard so they don't get a Thunder Wave off. And after about 7 tries, I take down both Dragonairs and get to Kingdra with a barely scraped Loki. I get a lucky crit the first turn, forcing Kingdra to eat at Barry. But then it gets a crit on me and I die. <sighs> Let's try it again. I get extremely close and then it uses Hyper Beam and is my chance to finish it off. And Loki misses. Claire goes for a full restore and then the same thing happens again, but this time I get the horn attack off. It took me nearly 20 tries just for Claire. After Claire, it's time to fight the Kimono Girls. Loki cleans up until Jolteon. Pukuo got a fire spin off this time on Umbreon, but can't get too much damage in, as Umbreon's one of the best walls in all of Pokemon in Gen 4. I got to Jolteon again, but since the Kimono Girls fight one at a time, I didn't see much point in setting up an Aqua Ring, so I just went for damage. She started the battle using Double Team, leaving me with no hope to hit with a Blizzard, which already has 70 accuracy. I tried again anyway and got a critical hit and a freeze and managed to finish it off with a horn attack. That was super lucky. I was pretty low health, so I set up an Aqua Ring assuming Vaporeon couldn't get too much damage off on me, and I was right. I probably could have won without the Aqua Ring, but I wanted to be safe. After defeating them, I followed the Kimono Girls to Lugia. I thought it would be a challenge to kill it instead of trying to run from it or using the Master Ball, so here it goes. I had Pukuo use Rock Tomb to lower its speed so Loki would have an easier time. I won my first try because it just kept spanning Rain Dance even though it was already raining. Now it's time to head to the Elite Four. I don't think I'm ready for this, so I grinded in Toho Falls on my way. While doing that, Pukuo finally learned a single decent move in Flamethrower. He still has terrible defense, so he's a glass cannon. Before he was more of a glass cork gun. I avoided battling wild Pokemon in Victory Road so I could save the PP for the final rival battle in Johto. He started with Sneasel, so I switched to Pukuo to take him out and got critted. So I tried again with Pukuo out first and got Sneasel out with two flamethrowers. Next was Golbat, who went down to one waterfall. And now it's time for the wall, Meganium, who went down to two flamethrowers. Thank god Pukuo finally can be more useful than slowing down Pokemon for Loki. Haunter confused me, but went down to two waterfalls. Pukuo thankfully outsped Magneton and took it down in one flamethrower, and Kadabra was no problem at all. If Pukuo hadn't learned flamethrower, that would have been impossible. After some small grinding, I decided to try the Elite Four. I gave Pukuo Shadow Claw to help with psychic types, but if that doesn't go well, I can always level up Loki to 63 to learn Megahorn. But here's our team. Pukuo at level 48 with Quick Attack, some priority, Rock Tomb, Shadow Claw, and Flamethrower. That's a decent spread as far as coverage goes, but his defense is still terrible, and his two best stats are still under 90 points. Our star child, Loki, is at level 57 with Horn Attack, Aqua Ring, Waterfall, and Blizzard. Blizzard hardly hits its target, but will probably be my only way to beat Lance. All of his stats are pretty good, and I think I can do this with enough luck. I forgot to press record, but here's how it went with Will. Pukuo went down to Zatu, so the rest of it was up to Loki. Oh boy. Loki has great special defense and great damage, so Zatu was finished in one waterfall. After setting up the first Aqua Ring, Jinx was a similar story. I missed the first Blizzard on Executor, but I got the second one, even though he had the light screen. I still one shot at it. Slow Brawl came- Slow Brawl. Slow Bro came out and was just too bulky. It took a while, but it just kept spamming Curse and let me kill it with Horn Attack. And the second Zatu went down to one critical waterfall. That went way better than I thought it would. Next was Koga, so I gave both of my Pokemon Peacha Berries. Ariados went down to a single Flamethrower, and Koga sent out Muck, which took out Pukuo in a single gunk shot. Loki set up Aqua Ring, and Muck used Toxic. The Peacha Berry came in handy very quickly. We got Muck and Red after a single waterfall, and Koga used a full restore allowing me a free hit, which took him to less than half, and one more finish it off. Fortress came out, and without Pukuo to take him out, I, ha I had to rely on Waterfall. But I got lucky with a crit on the second one, taking it down. Crobat outsped me, but couldn't get much damage off, so I finished it no problem. And Venomoth was a one-shot with Waterfall. That, again, went way too good. I think if I didn't have Aqua Ring, it would be way harder, but that move is a godsend for this challenge. I had to use one of my few others on Waterfall, because next was Bruno, who hardly is worth mentioning, as he was a clean sweep with Waterfall. I didn't even need Aqua Ring. Karen is last, and is the only one I'm really scared of, as I have nothing to hit her hard with. I got Umbreon low with Pukuo, 
and then she used a full restore. One last flamethrower missed, and it was up to Loki again, who managed to take out Umbreon with a couple horn attacks. Next was Vileplume, and this thing is bulky and paralyzed me right away. I tried again with Blizzard, but got almost taken out with a critical petal dance. I think I can do this if I send out Loki to deal with Umbreon and Puquo for Vileplume. I missed the second waterfall, leaving me with only 3 PP, and then I missed again. I switched to using Horn Drill to save the rest. This try wasn't going so well, so I reset and tried again. I took out Umbreon no problem, and this time I sent out Puquo, one flamethrower, got Vileplume low, but she got a stun spore off, and then Karen withdrew it for Houndoom, so I responded with Loki, who took it out in one waterfall. Even though Puqua was paralyzed, I got a priority attack off and finished Vileplume. Next was Gengar, and I kept Poo in with Shadow Claw, but Gengar took Puquo out before I could even get a single hit in. Loki set up an Aqua Ring, and Loki took out Gengar in two waterfalls. Last was Murkrow, who went down to two horn attacks. That one was a little hard, but I pulled through. But now it's time for the final challenge. I used a max elixir on Loki and gave it a shot. Puquo can't even get a rock to mint, so I sent out Loki. I whittled down Gyarados, but Lance heals it. It keeps only using Waterfall, so it doesn't do too much damage. Lance withdraws and sends out Aerodactyl. It uses Thunderfang, but went down in one Waterfall, leaving me with less than half health. Next, it's the first Dragonite. I miss Blizzard, and he misses Dragon Rage, and I get lucky with the next Blizzard. And here's another Dragonite. But I get a Blizzard off, and then the same thing with a third. I get really lucky again. That's the best luck I've had with Blizzard this whole run. Charizard goes down to one waterfall, and now it's time for Gyarados again. We go back to trading small blows, but Lance heals him twice. Gyarados gets me down to 1 HP and finishes me off. The Intimidate really messes me up. On my fourth try, I get lucky and finish Gyarados before he can switch, and then I misclick and I use Horn Drill instead of Blizzard. My seventh try goes exactly the same as the first, and I'm down to Gyarados versus Loki. Gyarados gets a crit waterfall right away, so I decided to try my luck with Blizzard. And I was rewarded. It was around my 10th try I really got discouraged. I think the only way I'm going to win this is either with a lucky crit or about 5 to 10 more levels. My 12th try, I got another lucky run, Gyarados stayed in and went down. I got super lucky with blizzards, Aerodactyl got off a of Thunderfang, but went down to a single waterfall. Charizard was last and went down to one waterfall. Man, that wasn't an easy one. My team really has no reliable way to take out water types. But, I finally got to put my team of two in the Hall of Fame. That was well earned, I'd say. Loki definitely made it easier with Aqua Ring, but of course, that's not the end of Soul Silver. Kanto's a lot easier, so I'm not going to mention every gym leader, unless they put up a good fight. But with my Fire and Water type, I will demolish Brock and Erika, and Blaine at least. Sabrina was hard at first, but was a clean sweep after Loki got Megahorn. The only thing that was the only other thing that was important to note was using the Master Ball and a Snorlax and Vermillion so I could give the leftovers to Loki. With that and Aqua Ring, I think I'll stand a chance in the final battle. Blue was pretty difficult. Both his Arcanine and Gyarados lower his attack with Intimidate, so I used Puquo to take those and switch Loki back in to finish it up. Loki came out and set up an Aqua Ring. It was rough, but the tactic played off. I beat Blue in about six tries. I knew I couldn't beat Red with my current levels, so I grinded on the Elite Four for a while, and then I went back and got Charcoal to give to Puquo to power up his Flamethrower. And let's face it, Puquo, at best, might help on Red's Venusaur, but I'd probably be better off putting all of my time into Loki. So before Red, we have a level 85 Loki with Megahorn, Aqua Ring, Waterfall, and Blizzard. He still has really good stats, so I'm super hopeful, and a level 60 Puquo. I think the only thing he will be good at is maybe taking out Pikachu so Loki doesn't, and I was wrong. Puquo went down immediately, and so does Loki. Pikachu way outspeeds both my Pokemon, and I can't get a single shot in, even with Puquo's insane HP and defenses. As it stands now, I can't win even against his first Pokemon until I can outspeed Pikachu. The biggest problem is that Pikachu has a base speed of 90, while Seeking has 68. I'm going to have to be pretty overleveled if I want to get a chance. I tried again at level 92, but the same thing happened. I have two ideas that might help, and one is getting Loki to level 100, so that's what I opted to try first. After hours of grinding, we got Loki to level 100. This is the make or break. If I can't outspeed Pikachu, or one-shot it, there's just no chance. But thankfully, I outspeed it and one-shot it with Megahorn. 
There's definitely a chance here. Venusaur comes out, and I think I could get off a of Blizzard, but to save my PP, I send out Pooh. But it gets one shot. It misses a Sleep Powder, so I get a second Blizzard in and take it out. Next is Snorlax. I'm pretty scared of this one, so I set up an Aqua Ring. It does a ton of damage, but so does Loki, but two Waterfalls take it out thanks to Hail. Lapras comes out, and the only thing I have that does neutral damage to it is Mega Horn. It gets me low and paralyzed, and then Red uses Full Restore. I think I can do this if I get lucky and freeze Snorlax with a blizzard. So I just keep trying again and again. I have to restart sometime because Loki gets paralyzed from Pikachu. And it was in my dozens of attempts that I realized Puquo barely outspeeds Snorlax. If I can get a burn on Snorlax, it'll have his attack so he can hardly hit Loki, giving him time to set up Aqua Ring. So that's what I just kept trying. This time we sent out Blastoise instead of Lapras, which I took out in just a couple Mega Horns. I think I can do this if I can consistently get a burn off on Snorlax. So that's my new tactic for sure. I finally get a run where Snorlax gets burned and I take out Blastoise and still have a lot of HP left. After roughly, and I'm not kidding, 60 tries, I got a perfect run. I one shot at Pikachu without getting paralyzed, Venusaur goes down after being frozen, Pooh gets a burn off on Snorlax giving Loki time to set up Aqua Ring, who takes out Snorlax and Blastoise and two Mega Horns. Lapras went down in a Mega Horn, a Waterfall so it doesn't go into full restore zone, and then another Mega Horn. Last was Charizard, who went down to a single Waterfall. That was brutal. If there's any mathematicians out there, I would love to know the probability of that run. This challenge was really interesting. It kind of consumed my life for three days straight. But it really did make me have fun playing Pokemon in a way that I never did before. And it even made me appreciate Sea King, a Pokemon I thought was useless before. I also definitely have a lot more respect for people who do these consistent Pokemon challenges. I used to think they look easy, but they take dozens of hours. And I don't think it's something I'm going to be doing a lot of. Maybe occasionally, maybe occasionally, but boy, that was a project. Unless, you know, this video takes off and then I'll do them all the time. Anyway, thank you for watching my first attempt on a Pokemon challenge video. It was just... I'm going to take a break from Pokemon for a while. <laughs> thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.